Welcome to Mentally Stronger, the podcast where with every episode, we're learning practical ways to let go of stress and struggles, grow our mental strength, and live a happier, healthier, more meaningful life. I'm your host, Melly O'Brien, co-founder of Mindfulness.com and creator of mindfulness-based mental strength training. I'm so glad to have you with me. Let's dive in to today's episode. Hello and welcome to the Mentally Stronger podcast. Today I want to talk to you about what I believe is actually the biggest threat to most people's mental strength. And it's probably going to surprise you. It's not what most people think. But first, I just want to share with you a story. So on the slopes of a high mountain in northern Canada lies the ruin of a giant ancient tree. Now scientists estimate that this tree lived for more than a thousand years and during the course of its very long life it endured huge storms, gale force winds, several huge avalanches and was struck by lightnings more than a few times. And through all of this, this tree remained resilient and survived. However, one day an army of tiny little beetles began to invade the tree and started to attack it from the inside out. These tiny little insects slowly gnawed away at the inside of the tree, destroying its inner strength with their tiny but ceaseless attacks. Now, this titan of the forest, which storms and winds had not bent, which time had not diminished, and lightning and avalanches could not destroy, was at last leveled to the ground by these tiny little beetles that were so small and fragile you could actually crush them easily between your fingers. So this story serves as a really good metaphor for what I have seen over the years to be the greatest threat to most people's mental resilience. In my work with people over the past decade, I've found that, you know, most of us can summon up the grit, the resolve, the strength that's needed to get through a time of great crisis. If we really have to summon it, we, we can do that. But it's the small, everyday, unhelpful thoughts that tend to eat us up from the inside out. It's the gnawing negative thoughts. It's the worries, the rumination, the self-doubt, the resentment, the self-criticism, the fear. What often happens is we kind of get stuck in one of these unhelpful patterns and we just have it on repeat. So the mind is just playing this pattern over and over and over again. Now, what we do know from neuroplasticity is that when you keep repeating a pattern over and over and over again, it eventually forms stronger neural networks, and and then it becomes a habit. And then that habit, if you continue it, eventually becomes a trait, meaning if you repeat anxious thoughts enough, you eventually become an anxious person. If you repeat self-critical thoughts enough, you eventually erode your sense of self-worth and you have no confidence. If you're thinking angry, bitter, resentful thoughts all the time, you eventually just become an angry person person. It becomes your default response to almost anything that happens. These repetitive negative thoughts are often what pulls us away from our connectedness with our own innate inner strength, with our wisdom, our our peace of mind. However, through using the skill of mindfulness, we can learn to identify when we're getting stuck in those old unhelpful thoughts and we can learn to let them go and return our attention to the present moment, our place of steadiness and mental strength. So every single time that we do this pattern of noticing that we're having an unhelpful thought, letting it go and returning our focus to the present moment, we weaken that old unhelpful pattern instead of reinforcing it. So every time we do this, every time we use the skill of mindfulness to notice, let go and return to the present moment, not only are we weakening the unhelpful pattern, but we are growing resilience, calm, 
and happiness from within. And we can take then this core of unshakable inner strength with us wherever we go. We can carry it with us through the ups and downs of life. So how can you start to utilize mindfulness today to start to break those unhelpful patterns that sap mental strengths? So one thing you can do is you can use this four-step practice called the STOP method. This practice has been shown to be incredibly helpful in reducing the stress, the anxiety, the negative moods that are caused by those unhelpful thoughts. So here's how you do it. Anytime you catch yourself caught up in an unhelpful thought, the first thing you do is you stop. So this stop method is an acronym, S-T-O-P. So the first step is to literally stop. So physically, you want to pause for a moment, just pause whatever you're doing and take a moment to just become still, especially if you're rushing, if you're feeling reactive or overwhelmed, just taking a brief pause for even two seconds can help you regain your perspective and connect with awareness. The second step, T is for take a breath. So bring your focus to the feeling of your breath. Take a breath in and out. So this helps to calm the nervous system and ground you in the present moment. Third step, O stands for open your awareness. So here we want to redirect the attention that is caught up in your unhelpful thoughts and bring it the focus into the present moment, so into your sense perceptions, what you can feel, see, hear, taste or smell. So one great thing to do in this open your awareness step is to feel your feet on the ground, then the breath in the body, and then pay attention to something in your environment you can see. Feet on the ground, breath in the body, what can you see? Now, the goal in this step is not to try and get rid of thoughts. So we're not struggling with the thought. We're not trying to stuff it down or push it away or pretend it's not there. We're just going to let the thought be there. But by bringing your attention into the present moment and your senses, you're unhooking from it. So your attention is no longer completely caught up in the thought, right? So in this way, you take a step back from the thought and reconnect with awareness. Okay, so P, the final step of the stop practice is to proceed with awareness. Now you're going to intentionally get on with whatever you were doing, but you're going to stay connected to your senses and also thinking about how you'd like to respond to whatever's happening from a place of strength and awareness, right? You're going to proceed with awareness. So let's just try a simulation of this together right now. I want you to imagine... You're in a situation where you're having really stressful thoughts. Your mind is racing. Your heart is starting to pound. You can feel an emotion arising in the body. The mind is saying something like, I can't believe this has happened. This should never have happened. This is not fair. Why do these things always happen to me? I'm such an idiot. Okay. Okay. S stands for stop. So let's just take a pause here. Put down whatever you're doing. And then T, take a deep breath in and out. O, open your awareness to your senses. You feel your feet on the ground, your breath in the body. And what's one thing that you can see? Just paying attention to your sense perceptions, your sight. And then finally, P is for proceed with awareness. So remembering that your thoughts are just thoughts. You don't have to believe them or buy into them. You don't have to obey them. Thoughts are just mental events, bits of language that move through the mind. So you can smile at the antics of your mind and just proceed with whatever you're doing, choosing your next actions and thoughts intentionally. Okay, and that's the stop method. It's really easy to use. It's really practical. It can be done really subtly. Nobody around you needs to know that you're using it. And I invite 
you to a little challenge in the week ahead for at least one day this week, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Try using the stop method for the day. So every single time you catch yourself having an unhelpful thought, practice these four steps. Paying close attention as well to the effects that using this practice has on your body, on your mind, and in your life. I hope it's really, really helpful for you. And, you know, if you do find it helpful, you can keep this in your mental strength toolkit to build and maintain your mental strength so that you can live a happier, healthier, and more meaningful life. If you know someone who you think might benefit from listening to this episode, share it with them. Sharing it could really help them to feel better and improve the quality of their life. And if you found this episode helpful, remember to subscribe to the podcast so that you can receive more tips on growing your mental strength. And if you'd like some more support in becoming mentally strong, come over to the website and check out the different coaching and training options I have on offer there for you. You can find the links for all of that in the show notes. And thanks again for tuning in. Take care and stay strong. Stay strong.